All right, this is essentially going to be part two of my button tutorial, where instead of just having one button that does everything, controls uh, all the other parts of another object, we will be having uh, what I call contextual buttons, in which you set them up to send an event to another object, and then you can have that button reused for anything else that has a script to, uh, that is set up to interact with this type of button. So we're going to start out by doing it in the normal Udon graph system and then be making it in Udon Sharp as well. So let's just call this button contextual. We'll be making two separate scripts, uh, one for the buttons and one for the mirror. Uh, we'll just have two buttons here so we can interact with it. Uh, the end will be turning the mirror on and off as well as this light up here. And we will be doing that by toggling the light box, which is a child of the mirror wall, which we will have a script on. So if we come into our button and open the graph, we are going to need a target for this to interact with. Um, since we'll be interacting with the script, the target will be a udon behavior so space search udon there we go variable udon behavior let's try this up here and i am going to call this target there we go and since we want to use this in the inspector we'll set it to be public and we'll only need one event and that will be all right search come on uh events interact Right, put that there. Ah, I'll just put it here. Um, we are going to be using this to check to see whether or not another object is active. So this mirror will, that we'll be toggling on and on will have a internal variable called active. And if that's true, we'll send one event to it. If it's not, we'll send a different one. It'll, it'll make more sense when we get to it. So. We need to test that now, so we'll take a branch, which is our if statement. Uh, do a get, if I can type get variable. Uh, Autofills for target, good. And we'll need to run that through a udon behave your you are get program ver actually you can probably just search that by program variable yeah get program variable it's easiest all right so we'll put this into instance because this will be the instance we're grabbing from the name of this will be active and we'll bring this over to here now we will need to determine if it's true we'll disable it if it's false we'll enable it so we will send the custom event uh, and we will call this one disable because we'll be disabling it copy our get variable and then here Oops, missed. Oh, there we go. Just duplicate this and call this one enable. It's false enable. Spam compile. All right, so we've got this now on our buttons. Let's drag a mirror wall into both of these. Now mirror wall is showing up here because I have the Udon behavior on here. If you didn't have the Udon behavior on here, it would not show up as this is specifically looking for an Udon behavior component that an object has on it. So if we go to our mirror wall, we will create a new VRChat Udon graph program. We call this mirror wall. Now this will be an instance of having a script that does something specific for itself, 
but looks for information from outside of it. So we are going to need two variables for this one. And like I said before, we will need a bool for active. So bool, a constant bool shows up first. We'll get variable bool. And just call this active, act, active, there we go. So that to be public, so the other script can access it. And we'll need a public game object. Here we go. Now this we'll just call light box because we'll be using this to toggle the light box on and off. Set that to be public. And we'll be having two events. So search custom event. Yep, just custom. We will call this one enable. Now this will do a game object set active. Set active. There we go. Try this from here. This all lined up. And we'll do a get variable. Just so that we can tell it, oh, we need to set lightbox to be the active or inactive object. Since we're enabling it, we will set it to be active. And in order to keep things uh, followed up with this, we will set active to be active as well. Uh, set var. Auto fills with active. Now, since set variable works for any type of variable, it doesn't have any like built in fill things. So we need to put our own value into this. And that's where the uh, constant bool that we saw earlier uh, comes into play. We can just tell this to always be active or inactive. Here we'll have it be active. Now we got the enable event finished. So I'll just copy that, paste it call this disable and turn these off spam compile a bit come back to our scene and we will be putting this on our mirror and we'll set light box here now since the mirror is already active in this scene I'll just set this to be active so it is caught up at the beginning um, Actually, no, we'll have this off. It's always best to leave your mirrors off um, at, at the start of a world so that players don't just instantly lag if they come in with a potato PC and 900 other people. All right, so ooh, just gonna make sure. Yep, mirror wall, mirror wall, everything is set up. We'll go to builder and we'll build and test. So this is essentially the uh, type of event system slash buttons that I use for the portal worlds that I'm working on at the moment. So that way you know it uh, functions uh, in practice. Um, I say that and then that basically just guarantees that something's going to go wrong this time, won't it? <laughs> All right, so there's our mirror from last time. Come over here and nothing. How much you wanna bet that getting rid of, well, that duplicating these and deleting the old ones fixes the problem because I don't know, VR chat. All right, button contextual. Autofills with mirror button contextual autofills with mirror mirror wall autofills with light box perfect control us to save build and test all right take two Fortunately, it seems to be booting up pretty fast, so we don't have to worry about too much loading time. There's not a whole lot of complicated things going on in this scene. 
Just close Steam VR. We're not using VR at the moment. All right. There we go. They work perfect. And they even enable the. Ooh, where's my mouse? There's my mouse. They even enable the light up here. So now we're going to go out and recreate that in Udon Sharp. Um. I know some people will probably pop out here because they got all they need. Still recommend uh, trying to do this in Udon Sharp as well. Helps you understand what's going on on the back end a lot better as well. Even if you're not interested in uh, using Udon Sharp all the time. So I'm going to call this button contextual sharp. And we're going to use it on this right button here. Since we've made a new C sharp script, we have to let it compile a little bit. I understand that it's a empty script. Alright, place it in there. Just compile it. And why not? Double click here and it'll open it up in Rider. For you, it will most likely be Microsoft Visual Studio. Alright. So. Actually, I'm going to open up the Udon graph here so that we can have it for reference so that I can walk you guys through exactly how this stuff relates to what we're doing. Alright, so we're going to need a public Udon behavior named target. So, public Udon behavior target. And then we'll be running the on interact script. So, void interact Ooh. all right let's try that again brackets nope fat fingers that's what i'll blame it on all right so we're going to be checking if active is true or not and then responding in accordance so i'm just going to type this out and then explain what i'm doing if right if bool target dot get program variable active oop got an extra parentheses somewhere in there there we go all right so this is determining if the variable active is positive we could hit a uh, double equals true right here but that's not needed because this statement tests that as it is um, if you're getting a program variable you need to say whether or not it is a, a bool an integer or anything like that right here otherwise if I here if I just delete this actually I'll get confused everything breaks and it's like oh no no we'll just leave it and have bool right there and if it's active, we'll do target dot set custom send custom event uh, disable so that we disable the object. Then else we'll do target dot send custom event enable. And control us and come back in here so now that we've finished that we can wait for this to compile and then we'll redo the mirror wall as well I create your sharp script mirror wall sharp now we wait for that to compile <laughs> uh, I believe I put the button sharp on the second contextual yep but since we just have one mirror we'll be putting it ooh, a little bit of lag we're putting it on here i'll double click this and or just line this up so we can see everything we'll be using a bool name active and a game object name lightbox so just scrap this uh public bool active 
and by not stating anything is default false and we'll need a public game object light box and then we'll do equals true wait no I'm an idiot nope you don't need equals anything there <laughs> that's a game object we'll do that in scene uh, so we'll need two custom events so we'll do public void enable enable parentheses all right now over in here we just said void interact this is just because it's only needed in this script but if we do public this allows other scripts to interact with this which is where this one's calling it so this one will need to be public so we're gonna say on enable we will set we will take lightbox dot set active true because it's enabled then we'll do active equals true and just have that all caught up then we'll do a public void disable light button light box dot set active equals false and active equals false control us to save come back in here we let it recompile just give it a bit of time for it to do that come back to our scene I'll just hit control s to save make sure we got sharp not sharp and sharp so we'll just boot this up again and oh, come on we'll just hit build and test and head back into vr chat to make sure our script works i guess at this point it's scripts full screen this there we go load into the world and let's check out our buttons so the left one yep still works and that's working with the udon sharp script and the udon sharp button not working hmm. let's see what I did wrong if we go back into writer for the button if bool get target it get program variable active target send custom event disable send custom event enable oh that's all working what events boot on behavior Yeah, I'll just retype this because I don't trust myself to be able to see the some possible spelling mistake that who knows is where. All right, fast coding, public udon behavior target void interact. If Pool target dot get program variable active target dot send custom event disable else else target dot send send custom event enable control us to save on this come back uh, close out of unity <laughs> close out of VR chat come back into unity and let the scripts compile <laughs> let the mirrors die because VR chat build and test 
And we'll give this one another shot. Hmm. Kind of wish what I kind of wish I knew what I did wrong there. I I bumped into that while testing earlier, but I think I'm just I think it's just getting late and I'm not able to see my own spelling mistakes. Nope. Still doesn't work. Let's just set that to be even on sharp behavior instead. Shouldn't make a difference, but make sure there's no space here. Come back in here. And the inspector Bro break our mirrors again ceremonial at this point go back to this one. Oh, okay so now I've solved this to be a new on sharp behavior select this just hit compile again because I trust nothing and build and test There shouldn't really be any difference between selecting a Udon behavior and a Udon sharp behavior there. Um, if you're using Udon sharp for everything, you should probably just consistently choose Udon sharp behaviors. Um, I do in most of my scripts, but let's see here. I just want to make sure everything has good interplay between the different types. There we go. Yeah, I guess that fixes it. All right, note to self, use Udon Sharp behavior. <laughs> All right, so that is it for our um, custom buttons that do contextual actions. Um, the, they're rather more useful later on when the things do more complicated things, but eh, it's just good to get used to them at this point. Uh, if you want to have like music playing after things and yeah, it's just good to know. Um, after this, I'll probably be doing a focus on player mods or what used to be called player mods. Uh, just basically player movement uh, as in like the run speed and the jump speed. It's probably going to be the shorter of the videos that I put out. But I know it's something that a lot of people want to know as they're starting out because it used to be a lot more clear cut as to what to do uh, when it was with triggers and just called player mods. But yeah, I'll do that in the next video. We'll see ya.